Welcome back, scientists. I am Mr. Steyer, and welcome back to Mr. Steyer's classroom. Today, we are going to identify the internal structures of a wild rose, and we're going to describe the functions served by those internal structures. <laughs> As you may recall, the last time we were together, we identified the external structures of a wild rose. And you might remember that some of the things you learned the last time we were together were that a flower is responsible for reproduction in a, in a rose. The leaf is there to make food. The stem is going to help position the leaves for the best exposure to sunlight and the roots are there to absorb the water and the nutrients. Well, today we're gonna to take a look from moving from the outside of that plant to the inside. And we know that if we're gonna look on the inside of a plant, we're going to need a tool to do that. And that tool is more than likely going to be a microscope. So, we don't have one that we can use today, but we do have some cross sections from our textbook that we can look at in order to understand some more of those internal structures and to look more closely at what's happening on the inside of a flower or any plant for that matter. So we're going to ask ourselves, obviously the first question is, what is an internal structure? Well, an internal structure is anything that is on the inside of the plant. And specifically, what are the internal structures of a flower, or in our specific case, this wild rose? We are going to see here that in our flower up top, that we can find that we're going to have the pistil and the stamens in the center of our flower, and those are there to help make pollen. And with that pollen that's going to get transferred to the pistil, then that is how that flower is going to develop fruit and seeds. So that is how it's going to make new plants or in order to create fruits that then would have a seed inside of them that are going to make new plants. So when we look at that internal structure, we can see that there's a lot more happening than just what you see in those petals. And again, we're not going to see that if we don't look closely with some type of magnification device. We can also look to say, hey, what is inside of the leaf? So if we look at that leaf, we can see that inside of that leaf, if we look microscopically, we're going to notice that there's layers. And inside of that leaf, you're going to find that the leaves are using that, that water from the soil or the ground, um, carbon dioxide from the air, and energy from the sunlight to make food for the plant. And you'll learn more in fifth grade what that process is and how the leaves are actually made up of several parts. There's an outer layer that protects it, kind of like your skin on your body. There's a middle layer for food making. There's openings at the bottom of the leaf to let air in and make food into the food making layer. And as I know we've all seen in the past and we're seeing when we pick up the leaves outside, there's veins that are made up of tiny little tubes. And some of those tubes carry water to the leaf. Other tubes carry food from the leaves to the rest of the plant. So again, this internal structure of the leaf, there's a lot more happening inside of there than just there's a leaf on the outside of the plant. We also know that there are things that are actually happening inside of the stem. So inside each of these are bundles of tiny tubes and they are gonna carry that water up from the roots through the plant. There's other tubes that are like we learned from the leaves that are also carrying food from the leaves to the rest of the plant. So these systems are connecting in order to move food and nutrients around the plant to keep it healthy and alive. And lastly, we can look here at this internal structure, the roots. 
And yes, these are the tiny, there's tiny hairs on the roots that take in water and mineral nutrients from the soil. So we're talking more microscopically about those small little elements of the roots that are aiding in how the root is, how the plant is getting what it needs to survive. Now, we can see that there's a lot of structures that are happening inside of a wild rose or inside of a plant. We also want to look even more closely at some of those things that are happening inside of the, the flower, where we have the stamens and the pistil in that flower, because that is where that pollen is getting received and the plant is able to make its fruits. The plant is able to make new seeds. The plant is able to rejuvenate itself to reproduce and have more plants. So while you are thinking about this, not only do you have to be aware of the outside, the external structure of a wild rose or of a plant, just simply identifying what is the stem, but you also have to know what is the internal structure. What are the things happening on the inside of the plant and how are the external and the internal structures working together to help that plant to live, to survive, and to thrive. As you're working forward, remember we are identifying the structures of the wild rose and you can describe the functions of those structures. <laughs>